In this recording, I'd like to show you how to format multiple worksheets at the same time using grouping. In this chapter, we're talking about how to use multiple worksheets at once to do all kinds of things. One of the first things you can do is use them for grouping uh, and formatting. What I'm going to do is open up the Unit 4 Sample 1 file. It should be in your Unit 4 folder of your Recordings folder of your student data files. If not, give me an email. I'll send it to you. And open that up. Hopefully it won't take too long. In this worksheet, I've already entered or created, excuse me, 12 different sheets, one for each month of the year. And I've already entered in some budget data for January. And what I want to do now is first, is first of all, copy this data because my budget is based on how much money I make. So my budget's going to be the same for every month. Instead of entering it in every month, I'm going to copy it using grouping. Notice a technique I saw on the web that I just copied here to show to you real quick. In the color coded, remember you can color code these tabs by right clicking them and then choosing whatever tab color you want from the selections here. What the website showed me that I thought was kind of interesting is that they color coded the three months of the first quarter one way and then the second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. I thought that was an interesting idea, so I just incorporated it here and shot it, thought I'd share it with you. So now back to my January sheet. What I'm going to do is copy all of the data that's in this sheet to the clipboard. Could do Control C, but just so you can see it, I'm going to right click and copy it to the clipboard. And we get the racing ants, as I call them, that show that this is the data that's on the clipboard. Now I want to copy that to every one of these 11 other sheets. I could go to each one and paste it individually and it wouldn't take terribly long, but I can do it all at once by clicking on February and then creating a sheet group. To create a sheet group, you click the first sheet that you want and then shift click the last sheet that you want. Everything else in between is selected. It's kind of hard to see here because the way Excel does it is it dims the tab appearance and that means they're selected. So all 11 of these right now are selected, but January is not. Notice how it's bright red. So all of those are selected. And now I can press Control V or right click and paste. And it copies all of that data in here. Notice while we're here that the February box is already designated February. I didn't know the sheet name. I did a little research on the web and I found this complicated formula that you don't have to copy, you didn't have to enter it, it's already in the January sheet, but you can copy it if you ever need it for one of yours. And what this does, is it looks at the file name, looks for a square bracket, and then after the square bracket you find this, the sheet name, and it cuts that out of there and basically pastes it in there. Also notice as I click on these, here's August, August has got the right name in it, but the sheet selections don't change. Right? That's going to change here in a little bit, but I can switch through these and all 11 of these are still changed, but I'm just making a different one of the sheets the active sheet. All right. That's kind of the way it works when you don't select them all. Now I want to ungroup. To ungroup, there's two ways to do it. One way is not the way I usually do it, but you can right click and ungroup the sheets. Alternatively, you can click on any other sheet that is not selected. It will select that sheet and also unselect all the rest of them. Now I don't want the racing ants anymore. This is never covered in any of the books to get rid of them. If you don't want to see them, press the escape key. The downside to doing that is that uh, nothing is left on the clipboard now. Anytime there's racing ants that in Excel designates what's on the clipboard, and at this point there's nothing on the clipboard. Again, I'm going to jump to April and see that all my budget data is already there. But now I'd like to pretty this up a little bit. Instead of doing it for each sheet and then copying it or doing it over and over and over again, I'm going to format these as a group. I could have formatted all this stuff ahead of time and then copied it to all the other sheets. And most of the formatting would go, but not quite all of it. First thing I need to do, and I noticed I'm going to get my car payment label here and entertainment. Some of those are chopped off. So I'm going to grab column A and stretch it until I can see all the stuff that's there. Entertainment's a good one. Could have auto-sized it, but then this first family budget thing here would have made everything too big. Now that I've got that done, I want to make my titles a little bit bigger. So I'm going to select these two, and I'm going to use a Cooper face. Let me see if I can find it here. There it is, Cooper Black. And I want to make them a little bigger so they stand out, make them size 24. I'm going to make the month name a little bit smaller, so I'm going to shrink it down to 20. 
I also want to center these over the worksheet. A little later you'll see in the next recording I'm going to add charts to this. So instead of, I'm not going to center it over just this little bit. I'm going to center it over A through F. So then merge and center. Same thing with January. And no, by the way, you cannot do both of them at the same time. When you do, it tries to merge both of the rows and that gives you, it does not give you the effect that you want. Spruce this up a little bit more, add some background color to this month and change its text to white to make it stand out a little easier to see. That works good. All right. I want to bold face these and center them. I want to bold face this and right align it. And as you can see, or you can't see, but if I switch sheets here, you'll see that all of this has been done to all the sheets. So now I'm going to switch to August. And sure enough, notice that all the big fonts and the totals and the bold faces and the centering and everything is there. But notice one other thing. When I clicked on August, all the other sheets were deselected. De well, why was that? The last time we did it, it didn't deselect, it just changed the active sheet. We had all of the sheets selected. When all of them are selected and you click on a different one, it deselects all the rest. So that's something to kind of keep in the back of your mind, but more importantly, just watch the color of your tabs. And one other clue you have that there's a grouping, I've just grouped everything again, is the title bar up here tells you that there's a group in effect right now. And that's sometimes handy to know. All right, we've done all that. Now I want to enter some formulas. I want to know the total for my budget and total for my actual expenditures. So I'm going to click here and calculate the sum. That's the right range, so just press enter. And then I'm going to fill that over to the right, and it starts off initially, but then it says, oh, wait, there's nothing there, recalculates it to zero. I want these formatted. I see, I want them bold as well, and I want a top border. One of the things the book doesn't do a very good job of, particularly in this chapter, is it puts borders on the bottoms of cells that have data in them, and that's a bad idea. If we ever sort these by the number and the budget values, that formatting, the underline, actually goes with the cell. All right? And if you copy it, the underlining automatically goes with the cell. And in the book, they actually have you do some special pasting so that the formatting doesn't go with it when you copy it. Instead of doing that, it's better to put your borders on totals. And let's put borders, bottom borders now, on these labels. When I grade your assignments, I will always be looking to make sure that you don't have borders on this data. The way I check it, just so you know, is I grab this cell and I move it. If the border goes with it, it did, then you did it correctly. If the border stays there, then the border is probably on cell C or B15 here, and that's in the wrong place. I'll do that if it'll let me. Doesn't look like it will, so I'm just going to have to drag that back. So make sure you put your borders in the right spot. Okay, so now I'm ready to put in some sample data, and this is where I have to be careful. If I put in sample data in January with everything grouped, that sample data is going to be in every single month, and I don't want that. So now that I've got all my group formatting done, I need to remember to ungroup. Remember to ungroup and just click on one of these, except the current one, because they're all selected. When I click on January, nothing happens. So I could either right-click and ungroup, or I can click on February, which ungroups them all, and then go back to January. Now let's put in some sample data here. The housing is my mortgage, so that's not going to change. Utilities, it's January. It got really cold. Oops, it's too cold. 325. Food, we're kind of homestuck here, so we cleaned out the refrigerator. I only spent $550 on food. Car payments, not going to change. Gasoline, it's too cold. We didn't go anywhere. 75 bucks. Car repair, it's cold, something froze, had to fix it, just making stuff up as I go here. Entertainment, didn't want to leave, so we stayed home. Clothing, needed a new parka jacket because it's so cold. No school expenses. And let's say that we tithed $100, and in this month, it looks like we had a little bit of room, but we only saved $300. The numbers don't exactly add up, but that's okay. We can tweak those later if we need to. But note now in February, we can enter February data and so on. I'm going to do that offline so we don't have to spend a lot of time in the recording worried about that. But now I've got some sample data because I had the sum down here. We calculated it. When I do the same thing in February, it calculates the total as we go. 
Uh, before I end this recording, let's say that we've done all that sample data and now it's October and we realize that in October our car payment is going to be gone. We're going to finish paying off that car. So what I want to do is modify my budget for the end of the year. So I'm going to select just those three tabs. Notice I'm in October. Okay? And here's my car payment. It no longer exists. I'm going to make it a zero. I could take it out completely, but the problem with taking it out completely is then this worksheet for October, November, December doesn't match the early ones. And if I ever do any more grouping, they're going to be out of alignment. So in this case, I'm going to set it to zero, and you'll see in a later recording I'm going to actually take it out for the year 2014 because then it's not an issue anymore. But now that I don't have a car payment, I can bump a few other things up. Probably be a good idea to bump up my car repair because now that I've finally paid it off, it's probably going to need a few more repairs. So we added a couple of hundred there, and let's reward ourselves for paying off the car by adding an extra 50 bucks to my entertainment budget. And we'll also thank God for that and add to the tithing. Apologize to those of you who don't tithe. And finally, for savings, let's add the remaining of the money. We took 650 out. What's left over is 350. And now we have the same budget, and that's kind of what I'm making per month. All sample data. Don't assume the instructor makes that much money. Okay, so... We've modified that for the end of the year. One other thing you can do with grouped spreadsheets or worksheets, excuse me, is add headers and footers to all of them. As most of you know, I'm not a big fan of printing things unless it's absolutely necessary. Sometimes it is. So I'm going to add some stuff to the header here. I'll put my name, whoops, scroll up there and click first. There we go. Add my name in there. Notice again, my worksheets are all selected, so I'm doing this actually to all the worksheets. I'm going to put the current print date in the right corner, and then I'm going to go to the footer. Could scroll down, but there's a button here. Let's just jump there very quickly. And I'm going to put the file name at the top there. And notice all these buttons that I'm using. Hopefully, by now you've figured this out. Add the file name, press enter, and underneath it, I'm going to add the sheet name. And I'll use that as my, those as my headers and footer could do other things. And click outside of them so that it saves it. I think because I have four of them it's taking its time here. We'll give it a second. There we go. And then I can go back to normal view. Actually before I do I'm going to click on July. And again since I'm switching sheets it's going to deselect all the other ones. Okay. And there's that in the July sheet. And if we scroll down to the footer, there's my July sheet name, and there's the file name and everything. So that worked. Seems to be applied to all of the worksheets. One other piece of advice I have is if you have worksheets grouped, make sure before you save the worksheet, the workbook, and that looks like I should have noticed this as well. I go back to January, I'm still in print preview mode, so I'm going to select them all and say give me normal mode. Wait for it to catch up with me here go. Now if I go to January, actually while they're still selected, what I'm going to do is go to cell A1. Because if they're all selected, and I go to cell A1, then it goes to A1 in every one of those. And then before you save the worksheet, this is where I was heading, I recommend that you ungroup. If you group them, it doesn't want to ungroup this time. Let's do it that way. If you ungroup, if you don't ungroup and you save your worksheet, it will save with the worksheets grouped the way you left them. The next time you open it, they're grouped. You may not recognize it and start changing data in worksheets that you didn't want to change. So I hope I can save you a little bit of time when you're creating complex worksheets like this so you don't have to repeat this formatting and entering the formulas over and over.